In terms of finding your soulmate, there's actually an algorithm developed by mathematicians that can be used to help you do this. How it works is basically you take the number of people that you think you could go on dates with in your lifetime, and so well, let's say let's say 100, and mathematicians say take the square root of that number, so that would be 10, and then you go on dates with those 10 people, and afterwards you tell them all, no thanks. But you remember, out of those 10, which one was the best person that you met? Then keep going on more dates, and the minute you find someone who is better than that best person out of the 10, that person is the closest thing mathematically to finding your soulmate. What's interesting is, you know, this is kind of cold and, and you know, clinical and distant. Most people don't want to use uh, something like this to, to romantically find their soulmate. But what's interesting is we can also look at research from arranged marriages and find that we can learn a lesson there as well, in that love marriages usually start off much happier than arranged marriages. But however, after a few years, arranged marriages actually, their, their happiness quotient exceeds the, uh, the love marriages. But one takeaway we can learn is that with arranged marriages, people realize they need to make it work. They're basically handcuffed to another person and they put the effort into it. As opposed to with love marriages, people usually feel there's some outside force that's going to bring them happiness, and that's kind of dangerous to leave things to fate. So we can learn a lot from math, from arranged marriages, in terms of relationships, in terms of how we can apply these things, and realize that sometimes it, it takes a little bit more than just romance, sometimes a little bit of math and a little bit of effort can help.